participants uh, i welcome you all uh, to the second session of this day uh, in the morning we had a wonderful talk with talking gas so now we have uh, the second speaker of the day uh, that is uh, patricio so uh, i'll just briefly read out the introduction of uh, dr patricio so he's a full fledged professor at uh, uh, universidad uh, catolica the emuco faculdad de record cross naturales so uh, i'm sorry for the mispronunciation but i will still read out uh, your brief profile uh, patricio de los rios escalante who is an assistant professor of the universidad catolica de emuco that is in chile He is an agricultural engineer and a graduate in marine sciences of the Universidad de Antofagasta. He obtained his doctorate in science uh, in systematics and ecology in the Universidad Austral de Chile. Uh, when he finished in 2004 his uh, doctoral studies, he began to work in the Universidad Católica de Emuco. Uh, that is his uh, current affiliation also so uh, it is good to learn that he he started working in the uh, university during his uh, research also so during his studies in the university at the antofagasta he began his interest in systematics and ecology of intertidal marine decapods and uh, chilean brine shrimps strains during his uh, doctoral studies He did his doctoral thesis on ecology, inland water, copy pots, and uh, cladocerans communities in Chilean lakes. And simultaneously, he continued his studies on uh, Chilean and Australians. During uh, his academic period in the University of uh, Catolica de Temuca, he began to publish the data obtained uh, during his doctoral studies. and continued publishing the data obtained in successive field works mainly in chilean um, patagonia and uh, sporadically in easter island also his main research interests are inland water brachypods copepods amphipods and intertidal marine decapods he is a reviewer of uh, different peer reviewed journals and uh, he is a supervisor of many graduate and postgraduate students and has guided many uh, phd thesis so uh, it is really great to have uh, you today with us for a talk which is really interesting uh, this looks very interesting i expect to you to show beautiful pictures of this region uh, with that i welcome and hand over to you uh, professor patricia Please carry on. Uh, hi, uh, thank you for your presentation, my professor Rajiv Kapoor. Do you listen me? Yeah, we can see your uh, slides, sir. Right, I continue. I began with my uh, presentation. Uh, first, excuse me, my English quality. I am not English native speaker. you are per I, perfectly understandable yeah yeah we can understand you yeah we can understand you uh, you are clear you are loud and your slides are also visible to us please carry on with the presentation sir yes i i begin my presentation uh, i so yes uh, for improve communication that at the end of the presentation uh, send me your question directly in a chat and i will answer uh, uh, speaking yeah i begin my, my presentation is entitled ecology of intertidal decapod in northern chile and patagonia this is my affiliation address Catholic University of Temuco, Departamento de Ciencias Biológicas y Químicas, and Núcleo de Estudios Ambientales. As introduction, the Chilean decapods in intertidal environment 
involves many groups, mainly as Anumura, Breakura, and many of these groups coexist in Rocky Shore or Burrower on Burrower in Sand Bottom. The individuals live uh, uh, when live in rocky shores, in cracks, or underground stones. These coin groups uh, or have a, a gregarious behavior. In th these groups, feed mainly dead matter, vegetal or animal dead matter, and simultaneously, these uh, decapods are prey of marine um, birds or little fishes. A photography of uh, typical Chilean intertidal decapods. And on a geographical viewpoint, among Chilean territory, Chile is a very long country. It's a tall and long country. And in northern latitude, there are many, many similarities with Peruvian fauna. And this similarity of Peruvian fauna decreased gradually at southern latitude. And finally, in southern extreme latitude, the, the fauna in Chilean coast is very similar to subantarctic waters. Also, in the shores of northern and central Chile, the coasts are exposed uh, is very exposed to waves, and in southern Chile, the coast is very accidented because there are many inner seas, fjords, and um, island. For you know, this is the Chilean territory from approximately uh, 15 southern latitudes and approximately 55 southern latitude. This is continental Chile. Also, Chile includes oceanic Island, as you, you can see, Juan Fernandez Island in the front of central Chile, Sally Gomez and Easter Island in the front of north of Chile. I remarked that uh, Juan Fernandez Island is approximately uh, 700 far from the continent, whereas Sale Gomez and Easter Island or Isla de Pascua is approximately uh, three uh, hundred uh, 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 three um, uh, three thousand uh, of kilometers from continent. And finally, Chile has a territory in Antarctica at South. For understand the geographical patterns in these graphs, you can see that the north of Chile, the similarities with uh, Peruvian fauna, whereas in the south of Chile, the similarities with subantarctic fauna, this is the, uh, a, a caused and regulated by oceanographic process in mainly uh, streams streams and wave patterns. The Patagonia is a region that includes southern Chile and Argentina at south of 38 southern latitude. In Argentina, the Patagonia included cold and windy plains, plains with uh, troughs and semi arid landscape, and the coasts are very windy and exposed to, uh, uh, to waves. Whereas in Chile, the Patagonian coast is characterized, characterized by windy, windy and open coast between 29 and 41 southern latitude, and at south of 41 southern latitude, the coast has they are geographically accidented because there are many inner seas, fjord, Iceland, and ice fields that are contacted directly with the sea. And also in southern Patagonia, 
the weather is uh, has many strong storms and winds during practically all year. This is a photography that includes the Patagonia in orange in Chile and Argentina. You can see at south of Chile the accidental geography with many islands, fjords, and mountains, whereas in Argentina the geography is markedly opposite. This is a photography of Argentinian coast in southern Atlantic. You can see the semi arid landscape and the uh, very uh, a slow slope in the coast. In this photography, you can, uh, you can see the coast in northern Patagonia exposed with many uh, waves, many strong waves, and landscape very different to Argentina because in northern Patagonia and Chile, there are many native forests. Whereas in southern Patagonia, you can see in this photography, the existence of mountains, inner seas, fjords, and glaciers. And in this, uh, in, in this zone, the geography is very accidental. You can see at the left, a typical landscape where you can see the mountains practically adjacent to the sea, and the, in this, uh, in the in the left photography, you can see a lighthouse practically in a, a broad east island in southern Chile in Magallanes Strait. The present conference will, will expose results about ecological observation of the capot in Chilean northern and central Patagonian coast. This is uh, specifically between 38 and 43 uh, in south latitude that involves Araucania, rivers, lakes, and ice regions. In the red square, you can see the photography of the studied area. As far as observation in rocky shores, has been reported six species, Cyclograpsus cinereus, Emigrapsus crenulatus, and I remarked about this species was erroneously described in first studies as Cyclograpsus angulatus and Pachygrapsus marmoratus, but the last year was rectified his taxonomic identification. It was found Pachygrapsus pubensens, Agantosilbrox gallii, Petulistes violaceus and Petulistes granulosus. In first studies, uh, we uh, included eight sites between approximately 38 southern latitude and 44 southern latitude. In this, uh, in this study, we found this species from this. Uh, in this site, ordered from the most southern uh, site at left and most north northern site at right. You can see that the main species, main repeated species, is Cyclopsus angulatus. I remarked that in these uh, studies was originally described as Cyclopsus angulatus, but it was rectified as Emigrapsus crenulatus. This species was present among all studied cities, and its species coexist with other decapods. In this study, we use, we, we use a new model analysis of co occurrence species for the, for the domain if the species associations are random or structured. The result revealed that species associations are random. This means that there are not a structured pattern for explaining the species association. In according to interpretation of new models, the cause of random species association is that uh, the existence of many repeated species among practically all cities. That is situation similar to the observation for Chilean inland waters.
it is in rivers and lakes. From this species, Emigrapsus canulatus, is the most dominant and widely spread species that inhabits mainly in estuaries. This species was uh, uh, this species feeds mainly on dead matter, and it was studied intensively from 2018. This species is the main guide of littoral fish called as Patagonian blenny or Elegynops maclovinus or Robalo, as it is said in Argentina and Chile. It is a littoral fish that is distributed in the south of Argentina and south of Chile, and it is very important as local fishery resource in small, uh, uh, small coastal towns. This is the Patagonian Blenny. I present this, I present it in and draw and photography the species distribution of this uh, distribution of this species in, here in red, southern Chile and southern Argentina. And uh, my stuff with the uh, Elegino maclovinus emitted in Falkland Island. It is distributed in this sound tow. About the presence of Emigrapsus crenulatus or Cyptorepsus angulatus, as was described in the far studies, it was found that uh, this species, crab species, is many dominant in the stomach content in Elegynops maclovinops, as you can see in this table. This species, Emigrapsus crenulatus, inhabit under chingles and its spatial distribution is gregarious and negative binomial probabilistic model. This behavior is an uh, response as ecological strategy for maximize efficiency for its feeding behavior, avoid deshydrating stress and protection against potential predators such as fishes or marine birds such as sea owls. This is the report for Puerto Cisnes in 44 southern latitude. Whereas in soft bottoms, in example, Puerto Saavedra at the 8 south latitude, these species have a territorial behavior, and it will be probably that it, have uniform, it has uniform distribution that is positive uh, and, pos and, and positive binomial distribution model. In this table, you can watch the Variance may and ratio for Puerto Cisnes and for Puerto Saavedra. For, for Puerto Cisnes, the variance may and ratio is upper than one. This may and gregarious pattern. Whereas in Puerto Saavedra, the variance may and ratio is lower than one, that may and uniform distribution. In these graphs, you can watch the abundance report for Puerto Cisnes. You can watch that in blue, the theoretical pattern of negative binomial distribution. Um, in orange, you can watch the observed pattern of this species, Emigrapsus crenulatus in Puerto Cisnes. You can watch that, uh, you can see that uh, expected frequency is very similar or relatively similar to observed frequency. You can watch in Puerto Cisnes, this species that inhabits under rocks has gregarious pattern and negative binomial distribution. Whereas in Puerto Saavedra, in soft bottom, you can watch a positive binomial distribution that is due to uniform pattern. This uniform pattern remarks the territorial behavior of this species because the, in, in soft bottom this species is exposed and is markedly territorial behavior. In a comparative study on null model, this is overlap between 
two habitats with immigrants to Latus in northern Patagonia, Pargua and San Juan Estuary, it is in the region, with two sites in north, the north of Chile without this species, Trocadero Beach in Antofagasta and Caldera, it was found that the species have ceases size overlap, that in consequence means that this species, Emigrasus canulatus in the south of Chile, with the coexisting species, and in the north of Chile, the species that were found in rocky shores, share ecological niche. This means that these species have the same ecological niche. This man, this species have the similar uh, feeding strategies, and this species inhabit in similar physical niche, in, in this case, rocky shores. You can see the table of this data about the species reported in the north of Chile with total length. The result of model analysis that means that the existence of size overlap of all studied species in all seed sites, and these results revealed that the species share ecological niche. As other observation about northern Patagonian intertidal decapods, in rocky shores, exposed the rocky shore to the waves in northern Patagonia, specifically, specifically between 38 and 39 southern latitude, the decapod found is very scarce or absent. In exceptional situation at 30, uh, 38 southern latitude, it was reported the presence of Acanthocyclops gallae that inhabits mainly under small Metilus, Metilus purpuratus. And probably this crab, a small crab, Acanthocyclops gallae, predate on Perumitilus purpuratus. Also, in kelps, this is brown sea weed, such as Lesonia nigrescens, Lesonia trabeculata, Macrocystis, and Durbia antarctica, it is possible to find the capod of Taliepus genus, Taliepus dentatus, Taliepus marginatus. Nevertheless, it will be more exploratory studies because many shores in between 38 and 39 southern latitude has geographical isolation because uh, there are many abrupt mountains and very difficult for access. In this photography, I have found the, this Acanthocyclops gallae here, hidden in between other algae and intertidal cecil fauna. In this photography, I show the Taliepus, Taliepus genus, between brown algae. You can see the mimetism of this species, the colored brown, that is for mimeticized with brown algae. As a second topic about uh, intertidal decapods, at south of 41 southern latitude, it is possible for more decapod coexisting species. In example, in this study of 2018, uh, it was found Sigurgastus cinereus, Emigrastus granulatus, Petrolistic granulosus, and juvenile specimens of Homolaspis plana. And other important topics about this site is the existence of natural prairies of Enrizia with Gracilaria. This uh, Gracilaria provides habitats for other decapods, such as juvenile species of Leurocyclops tuberculosus. I remarked that, that this species was described probably for Chile in the recent literature. Nevertheless, in recent results, probably confirmed the existence of this species in southern Chile because this species was found hidden within Red Sea with Brasilaria. 
I uh, show the photography of juvenile specimens of Leurocyclops tuberculosus. This photography and this is a draw, a sketch draw. In a still topic, in southern bottom, is exposed in a post chart, it is possible from Pacific Sandcraft, a Merita analoga. Also, the original reports of approximately uh, 13 or 40 years ago remarked the coexistence with other sand uh, crafts such as Blepharipora spinimana and Lepidopa chilensis. In recent exploration, it was found only a Merita analoga. In inner seas, at south of southern and uh, of 41 south latitude, it was found Calle Chirus Ngarti. In this photography, you can watch a Merita analoga and Calle Chirus Ngarti. This is the reference where it based in the presentation. More details about my research activities you can see in these links. And I express my gratitude to Eliana Ibanez and Silvia by this important support in research activities. The project MESESUB UCT 0804, uh, excuse me, MESESUB UCT 0804, University Catholic, uh, Universidad Católica de Muco. And ME and ISMA for their important collaboration for all research activities. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Delos. Uh, uh, we we uh, understood your uh, presentation and uh, we are happy that you shared your all your research findings with us. Uh, so this was something uh, which was very exclusive that. Uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, crustaceans, decapods, we uh, we are also doing a bit of research uh, in Kerala. I think many institutes, uh, marine institutes, are also focusing on similar species. So your uh, talk was uh, useful. I'm, I hope that many of uh, our participants uh, might appreciate this talk. And uh, now I open the session for any kind of discussion that you want to have. Uh, uh, if, if the participants, any of you, uh, want to have any questions, please uh, write down in the chat box. I will read it out. So uh, there is uh, Delos. Uh, there is one question uh, yes. about uh, the null model analysis. Uh, the null model analysis. Can you uh, throw a bit of more light on that? What is this null model analysis? Yeah. Yes, okay. About null models, uh, the null models uh, is based in that the R species associ uh, association and R species structure in community ecology are random. There is uh, this main absence of a structure. Of a structure. Um, in my research activities about uh, the couple, I use null models about species association. This means that all species association in a site is, uh, are not structural or are random. This is the first null model. The second new model is size overlap. This means that the species with the size overlap share ecological niche. This means that these species can share the habitats or can share the price. The, do you understand? Yeah, I think uh, Diti Raut, uh, you got the answer of your question. Uh, our next question is from Lipika Patnaik. Uh, she wants to know that do intertidal decapods have some special respiratory adaptation? Yeah. Uh, do, do they have? Yeah, in theory, I did I did not study a, a special respiratory adaptation, but I read that the, some intertidal species in in the in Chile uh, inhabit mainly as adaptation 
in cracks or um, in, in holes where it is possible for a minimum wet uh, uh, level for uh, allow respira uh, 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 respiratory activity. Other species produce a kind of foam in the in in, in his body in its in its body as uh, for allow um, sustain minimum weight for respiratory activity. Do you understand? Yeah, I'm sure, uh, Lepika, that would uh, uh, you got the answer of your question. Uh, uh, Okay, Dipti Rao says that uh, there were two brachyurin traps in your three RD or fourth slide. Uh, there were some uh, brachyurin traps in your third or fourth slides. Uh, what uh, species right. are those? Uh, she wants to know yeah. the species. Yeah, uh, I I will return to fourth slide about this question. Yeah, Wait, may so I have a few yeah, seconds, please? Time. She, she says the third slide. Uh, I think the pictures were on the uh, th third this, slide. No, this she, slide? she talked about the pictures of the crabs. That was on the third slide. Wait, wait may I? I... Okay, uh, these are the species you mean to say? Uh, uh, I, I didn't understand two vacuum crabs in. In, in this presentation? Yeah, I'll repeat her question. She says there were two uh, brachyurin crabs in your third or fourth slides. I think she's referring to some picture where you showed some picture of the crabs uh, in the third slide. Yes? Yeah, yeah, she must be asking about the species of these crabs. Yeah. Ah, I explained about this species. It, it, this is an anumerian crab called Petrolistes violaceus that is very frequent in intertidal rocky shores under, uh, under rocks on in, in creeks. This species is uh, Agantocitrops gaii that I found mainly uh, associated to small uh, mussels. You can see it. And this species is Emigrapsus crenulatus that I found in choking of intertidal habitats. It can inhabit in, a, in, in, sandy, in sand bottom or under um, rocks. Do you understand me? Yeah, I think uh, uh, Dipti, you might have uh, listened to him and uh, I hope uh, uh, your answer is yes. Yeah, she says thank you. Uh, she, she, she's thanking you, and that is understandable. Uh, okay, uh, Delos, uh, uh, Professor, it was a good talk, and uh, I think many of my participants uh, have been benefited by this talk. Uh, is there any other questions from the participants? Uh, the session is still open. What? All right, me. Yeah, Dilos, please. What were you saying? Uh, can you uh, uh, write me in chat? I, I did not understand you, please. Uh, I was just uh, thanking you, uh, Dilos, for your talk. And uh, many of my participants have been benefited with this talk, uh, as it is evident from the questions which are coming from the participants. Uh, I thank you once again for being the part of this uh, faculty development series. And your talk was well appreciated by our all the participants. And uh, we look forward to a continued uh, uh, continued uh, partnership in the future faculty development programs also. Uh, 
Professor Rajiv Kapoor, please uh, write me in the chat box. Uh, yeah, I'm doing it. Oh, thank you for your invitation. Thank you. Yeah. That's all. So uh, with that, uh, we come to the end of this uh, second technical session. I, I hope uh, you all enjoyed it. And I look forward to meeting all of you tomorrow uh, with the two special talks, which is one is on Nepal virus, and the other one is on the use of statistical tools in day-to-day -day life. Uh, thank you once again, uh, Delos. Uh, it was wonderful to have you with us. And I take uh, leave from all of you. Thank you.